The Lord be with you. This evening in our Ash Wednesday service, we will intone the psalm. We haven't done that for a while here. Um, so on page five, we have the tone of the psalm. When we get there, um, Heather will play the tone through once. And then the uh, tone, I will intone the first line. And when you intone it, it will be the same tone that I have. Just a reminder how that works. The whole note is kept, um, the, all the uh, words up until the vertical line is sung on the same notes, and then at the vertical line, it changes notes according to the tone. So we'll do that when we get to it. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, and for those of you at home on Zoom, thank you for gathering. We gather this night in the midst of all the things that are happening in this earth to cry out to God. And we gather in God's holy house. Our first hymn, hymn 606, Our Father, We Have Wandered. If you notice the words of this hymn, it's the story of the prodigal son. Please stand as you are able for singing this hymn. grace of God, of Christ Jesus, the rich mercy of God, the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with the confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for reading of Scripture. The first reading is from the 58th chapter of Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down in the head like a bulrush and to lie in a sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I 
was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me known wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders, and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from the shirt, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O oh God, you will not despise. From the fifth chapter of Second Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found within our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in, in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be no, done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord be with you. I took my laptop to the repair place today. Last night, it was dark in my room, but I had the light of the laptop on. I was typing in it, and when I finished, I closed the lid, and I heard a pop. This morning, when I looked, the hinges were all coming apart. Kathy said my laptop had come unhinged. <laughs> and she says it's really the sign of the times that things around us are coming unhinged. And I was noticing that there were other things in my day that were a little bit unhinged. When things become unhinged, broken, they need to be repaired. And Ash Wednesday is a time when we recognize that some things in our lives have become unhinged. You know, I asked the repairman about what it would take to fix that. He says, you know, I'm hoping that I can do with a little epoxy, hold it back together again. But I can't guarantee that the screen's not going to break. When things are broken, where do we turn? I'd like to turn to one who is able to receive the brokenness in my life and able to bring healing. Sometimes we turn to other places. The people in our first reading turned to other places. They were complaining. God, how come you don't hear us? See, we're fasting. We're doing all these sacrifices. We're doing all these things in the name of God. We haven't been eating. We've been, we've been going through these things. Don't you see? And why don't you answer us? Why don't you say anything, God? There's a congregation um, years ago that I was at that had, and I've told you before about this, that, that whenever things felt like they were dying or like, you know, that they really needed a shot in the arm, that they would decide to have an all-night vigil. And so when I asked them the next day, how did the vigil go? They said, well, it didn't go very well. We only made it till, six, till five in the morning. And the goal was to make it till seven. So, well, what did you do all night? But that wasn't the point. The point was, you know, if we suffer for God, if we can stay up all night, they, they could have been doing anything. But the measure of it was the measure of suffering, the number of hours without sleep or the number of days without food. 
And the fasts in this text are uh, people who are doing this kind of denying their body something in order to gain favor with God. What is it that we want from God? And what is Lent about? I had a great big chocolate egg filled with peanut butter last night. Does that mean I can't eat any more of that during Lent? Is that something we're supposed to give up during Lent? Is that what Lent is about? And if I promise not to eat a peanut butter filled chocolate egg for the next 40 days plus Sundays, Will that bring healing to the earth? Because I think that's what Lent is about, is bringing healing to the earth. What are the things that we're doing in our life for Lent? Are they things that bring healing to the earth? Giving up the chocolate egg that I ate last night. And I didn't eat it last night because today is Lent, the beginning of Lent. I ate it because I was hungry and wanted some chocolate. Just to be honest. You know, in Ecuador, growing up, the two days before Ash Wednesday, you know what they are? Carnival. And the other place that's having carnival is Brazil. So the day before Lent, and the point of carnival is to get all your mischief out before Lent. You can't have any fun for the next 40 days but it's Easter, so let's have all the fun now. So they have this, you know, just over the top carnivals in, in Brazil before Ash Wednesday where you have to confess everything you did the night before. And in Ecuador, what we did, instead of going out with that, our carnival was very specific. We threw water at anyone we wanted. So if you're going down the street, if you happen to be walking underneath a balcony, um, you could very well have someone just pour a bucket of water, complete stranger, on you. Uh, you know, I remember when I was small, um, taxis were often pickups. They're not anymore. But the taxi drivers would load their pickups full of people, and then they'd stop when there was water and let the, all the passengers get just drenched while they had their windows up in the front. So we would just have these two days of waterfall of fights, and, and it was all about getting our mischief out because then we had to be solemn for the next 40 days. Does that bring healing to the earth? Is that what this is all about? The people are crying out to God, we're fasting, we're doing all these, we're sacrificing these things. Why don't you hear us? Where is God in this world? Do you wonder that sometimes? And all the things that are happening, God, this would be a good time for you to show up. But you know, have you ever been in a conversation with someone where they're, they're talking so much that you can't get a word in edgewise. You want to say something, but you don't get a chance to because they just have so much to say. And if we read our first lesson, the, all of the, the good religious people of God are talking so much about how they sacrifice for God that they don't have time to listen for God. And God is saying, will you just be quiet and listen because I do hear you. And if you want healing and if you want answers to these prayers, I'm, I'm trying to tell you about this, but you're not paying attention. He says, what I, I, do, I don't want these kinds of fasts and religious sacrifices. What is it? What's the fast that God wants? Remember in our reading? Hmm? Loose the bonds. Feed the hungry. Let the oppressed go free. I think if we look at this and we ask, what is it that God wants, and we are the body of Christ? What if we were to draw our mission statement from this? And if you look at this and prophet after prophet after prophet, I've been noticing as we've been reading through the prophets in these last weeks, none of the prophets say, fill your pews up with people. 
And yet that's the mission statement of so many churches. Um, what church do you go to? What time does it meet? So is church about Sunday morning at 10 to 11, 15? Is that what the worship of God is about? Or is the worship of God in the church is all about the other six days in the streets when all these things are happening and then the seventh day we come back and talk about it. And then we go back and do it some more. And what's happening in the, in the text in, in uh, the Isaiah passage is that the people are saying that this, this act of following God is all about the religious gathering and that's it. And what God's response is of what I want from you doesn't sound religious doesn't sound like church, actually. It, it maybe sounds like some churches, congregations, but it doesn't sound like, like a worship service. But that's the kind of worship that God wants. There is all across the world a concern about the church and is the church going to survive? And when we're talking about that, what are we talking about? When we say, is the church going to survive? What are we talking about? Are we talking about clothing the naked and feeding the hungry? And are we talking about organizations, institutions? And is God interested in those organizations and institutions? Or is the sacrifice that God wants is a broken heart and a broken heart about the ashes of this earth? What is Ash Wednesday about? Not just confessing everything we did in Carnival, but it's about the ashes of the earth. What are the ashes of the earth? I think one of the most vivid pictures of the ashes of this earth that I've seen recently are the pictures of Turkey and Syria, where we see the rubble and the ashes and the people who sometimes are in the midst of those things and the efforts to try to rescue them. God says, yeah, you have the religious festivals, but you're fighting. That text reminded me of when I flew to Jerusalem. I was so excited to get to Jerusalem. I got to live there for five months. And I remember landing in Tel Aviv and very excited to, a little bit scared because I was traveling all by myself and I didn't have any idea where the school was and I couldn't speak the language. And so I was hoping that I would end up at my destination that night at the right school. But the taxi was supposed to fill up with nine people before the taxi driver would drive. He wanted his full money's worth for the drive from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And so he waited, and some of the passengers wanted him to just go with the few of us that were in there, and they didn't care about him filling up the car. They wanted to get to Jerusalem. So there's this big fight that burst out. I think that's what it was about. I, I, I don't, it wasn't my language, but that seemed to be what it was about. And it wasn't very friendly. This was like you know, welcome to Israel. Um, and I, I learned that Israel is this place where people are deeply divided and where people are fighting and killing in the name of God and people are insisting that their way is right and are driving other people out. So we drove all the way up from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and when we got there, one of the first people that he dropped off, she got out and, and started yelling and fighting at him again. Maybe it was about the bill at that time, I don't know. And then she turned, looked at us and she said, Shalom. And that was my welcome to Israel. Shalom. Peace of the Lord. The wholeness of God be with you. And this text is talking about our religious festivals and then fighting. Wishing people shalom. And then having other times when we were just at each other's throats. You know that the uh, congregation that would have these all-night vigils because they didn't feel like they were, you know, they needed a shot in the arm. They had horrible fights, the council. I was amazed. They said, oh, well, last year before you came, we would put our Bibles down, go out and take it out in the streets, have fist fights. God, why don't you hear our prayers? Why aren't you answering us? We've been praying. We've been fasting. We've been staying up all night. I don't know what we did during the night, but we stayed up all night just for you. Don't you hear our prayers? Ash Wednesday is about the brokenness of the earth. It's about the betrayals. It's 
about the divorces. It's about the abused children. It's about the people who are hungry. I went this week over to, I got to, to uh, see Pastor Sally in, in the church in Trinity, Lutheran Church. Um, and they had on their tables lunches that they're making for the kids, 500 lunches every week. Um, and she was telling me that this started when someone at the school noticed that a child stuck a hot dog in their pocket during lunch. So what are you doing? She says, I'm taking it home to my brother because he's hungry and he's not here. And so then, they're, well, you can't do that. Or, you know, there was some things that worked out of that. But then what came out of that is we need to make sure that the people are fed. The ashes of Ash Wednesday are that boy who is taking food home. The kids in our confirmation class in St. Croix, when we were there, we wanted to take them out for ice cream. So we don't want ice cream. We want food. We're hungry. They weren't interested in hunger in the, that. What are the ashes of our lives tonight? What are the broken dreams that we have? What are the fears? What are the hurts? The hurts that can't be fixed by not eating a chocolate peanut butter egg. I think that Ash Wednesday is about the deepest brokenness in our lives the deepest hurts in this world, the deepest mars, the wounds that won't heal, they don't turn into scars because they are still alive. And then what happens? These ashes we bring tonight to God's presence. And we bring them in tears and we bring them without answers. We're bewildered. We bring them to God and God leans down in the ashes and takes the ashes and marks the sign of the cross. And God in the brokenness takes the brokenness and marks us and says, you are my child. I claim you for the kingdom, for the reign of God, for healing. And I want you to be part of my community that takes healing to the rest of the earth. It doesn't get sidetracked in the things that don't matter but this stays focused on what's truly life-giving. Look at Paul. He's in prison. He says in this passage, <laughs> he's, he's funny. He's got a sense of humor. We're treated like imposters, but we're true. But we're treated as though we're liars, imposters. We're treated like we're not known, like we're not significant but we're well known. We're treated like we're dying. Yet we're alive. We're punished, but we're not killed. We're treated as if we're sorrowful. Oh, pity that person. Yet we are always rejoicing. And Paul is not concerned about the image that the world has of him. He's not worried about what other people think of him. Because he is so excited about salvation. Now is the time of salvation. God is on the loose. Can you see God? Because this is the time right now that God is working. God is at work in the world. God is bringing healing. Rand came home from the hospital. She had her surgery. Tonight we're praying for Jim and Lydia. Jim's in the hospital. Maybe with heart issues. But we pray every week, and every single week, God is at work because now is the time of salvation. And so we come to God with our brokenness and our ashes, and Luther talks about the happy exchange that what we get in return is inheritance of heaven. The light of epiphany shines on us, showing us that we haven't vacuumed very well. We haven't dusted everything. We did it in the dark, like the deck that I built, and then I had to rebuild it each time the sun came up. I stopped working in the dark. And the light shows that we are, have work to do, that we're hurting, that we're broken. And then what that does is it plunges us straight into Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday, we bring the brokenness and ashes. And you know what Ash Wednesday plunges us straight into is Lent. And what is Lent about? It's 40 days plus Sundays. 
if I were to say to you 40 weeks, would that bring anything to mind? For any of you? If I were to say nine months, would that bring anything to mind? What happens in nine months? Human life. And in scriptures, every time that I have seen 40 in scriptures, there is a birth that follows. I think that the number 40 is all about the womb of God and what God is doing. 40 days it rained with Noah, and afterwards he came out and there's a new covenant, a new earth, a new cleansing. 40 days Moses was up on the mountain, they came down, there's a new covenant. 40 days they were in the wilderness, 40 years, 40 years. And after that they received the promised land, the new land. 40 days Jesus was in the wilderness. And after that, the Son of God was loose on the earth. Every time there's 40 in Scripture, it is, it is a time of being in the womb, just like the 40 weeks, and there's a birth that happens. So Lent is not, I don't think it's about, okay, let's try to be gloomy for the next 40 days plus. It's about being in the womb of God. It's about bringing the ashes and leaving them at the presence of God and then being in the womb of God and watching what God develops. And we can't see ahead of time. I was waiting for my little child to be born. I longed for nine months to see her face. I didn't want to see it too soon, though. But I was eager to know, and I remember when she was born, just wanting to hold her and just looking at her face and having her stare up into my face and her little eyes trying to focus on, what am I looking at? Birth of something new. And God is at work. Now is the time of salvation. There's birth taking place. And we are in the womb of God. Lent is about that time of being formed for God's mission on earth. What is the birth that God wants to do in the veil through this congregation? What is our calling? May God's peace be with you as God turns ashes into hope. We bring God our ashes and God gives us new robes washing us at the font. We have a hymn now. Once we sang and danced hymn 701. Friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil, resists whatever leads us away from love of God and neighbor. 
I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey through these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. Have mercy on us. For self-centered living, for failing to walk with humility and gentleness. Holy, holy God, God, holy, and, holy and, mighty, and mighty, holy and immortal, and immortal have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. For longing to have what is not ours, for hearts that are not at rest with ourselves. Holy, holy God, God Holy and mighty, holy, holy and immortal, and immortal have, have mercy on us. on us. For misuse of human relationships, for unwillingness to see the image of God in others. Holy, holy God, God, holy, holy and, and mighty, mighty, holy and immortal, have, have mercy on us. us. For jealousies that divide families and nations, for rivalries that create strife and warfare, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, for carelessness with the fruits of creation. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For hurtful words that condemn, for angry deeds that harm, Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. For idleness in witnessing to Jesus Christ, for squandering the gifts of love and grace. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Almighty God, you've created us out of the dust of this earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penitence, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You're invited to come and gather around the railing. As you come forward, we'll sing together, Jesus, remember me. Jesus, remember. 
to your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into God to the thoughts and God washes and cleanses us.
Accomplish in us, O oh God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Through the Holy Spirit, God cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and we will read together, proclaim the Lord's the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in, in God, God, the Father the Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God. Pray for all who cry out in pain and in hope. Let us thank God for God's miracles this week and for all that God has done for us. God, our hope and our Redeemer, you are so good to us. Your mercy and your love are new every morning. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We thank you, O Lord, that you take what is broken and create something new. That you take what is dead and raise it to new life. That you take wounds and that you bring healing. That you open the eyes to those who are blind. That you raise the lame. That you reconcile people who have been torn apart. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are a God of healing and wholeness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. This night we bring to you our ashes. We bring to you the pain, the brokenness, the remains of dreams, of hopes, of desires, of the dealings of this earth, of humankind. This night we bring the ashes before you of Turkey and Syria of Israel and Palestine, of Ukraine and Russia, of the many wars that have been going on forever that we forget about, of the broken families, the ashes of the lonely, the ashes, O oh Lord, of the hurts, the things that are difficult to forgive. We bring them to you, O oh Lord, and ask that you would wash us clean. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the rulers of this earth that they would be washed by you and that they would be filled by your spirit, that they would work for the good of the vulnerable to set the oppressed free, that you would give courage where they need courage, that you would renew strength where they feel weak. For the leaders of our churches, O Lord, for our bishops, for our volunteers for our workers, 
restore your fire in them, that they might spread your word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We thank you, O Lord, for the many answers to prayer, for the healings that have happened, for healing happening for Rayanne, and we lift her and ask for continued healing. We lift before you, Jim, this night, and Lydia, and ask for your healing, your strength, your renewal for them, and for those that we name now silently or loud. We thank you, O Lord, that you are a safe place to turn to with these concerns. We thank you, O Lord, for the joy that comes after the long night. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. To you, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Merciful God, receive our praise and thanksgiving and the offering of our lives. Make us your hands to feed the hungry and prepare us to receive the bread of life. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty, our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, our judge. We praise you for Christ, who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ broken for you. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me, the blood of Christ shed for you. Remembering, therefore, the sacrifice of his life and death, the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ. To him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Return to God with all your hearts. Receive bread for the journey and drink for the desert. All are welcome to come and receive.
And now may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us on our Lenten pilgrimage. Make our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who's called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill, 612. of Christ, go forth to love and serve the Lord. 